Hey everybody, it's the Trout. Hope you're having a great day and welcome to the Trout Show. Recently I was in Muscle Shows, Alabama, meeting with some other musician friends and there to record a song for my new album that's coming out October 1st. While I was there, I got to see a lot of great musicians perform and, and, and one night I was sitting there and a gentleman walked in with a case and he whipped out this saxophone. Now I like sax players and I, I'd love to write a tune that had a sax player on it, but I'd never heard this guy before. And so he started playing with the other musicians, which were all great musicians, by the way, and I was blown away. So I said to him, hey, would you mind being interviewed for my channel? And he said, no, absolutely not. His name is Van Birchfield, and Van is probably one of the best sax players I've ever heard. Now that's saying a lot, because I've heard a lot of great sax players, but Van has had a tremendously great career in the Christian market, and now he's doing some things in the secular market, including new albums that he's brought under his name, and he's got some other great musicians that are playing with him. But I wanted to know more about Van and all his skill sets and what he's done with his life playing such great music with his sax, well, multiple saxes, I should say. So he sat down with me and he talked about that. He talked about his career, he talked about his music, and it was a lot of fun. So before we go on though, make sure you, if you like this channel, please subscribe to it. it. Just takes you a moment. If you like the video, just like it. As I said before, I really like doing these videos and I like to continue doing them. So up next, one of the best sax players you'll ever hear, Van Birchfield on The Trout Show. Enjoy. When did you move down to where you are now in the Muscle Shoals area? It hadn't been that long ago, was it? For 59 years, and I just moved out of Birmingham here to Muscle Shoals. Uh, I, I turned 60 this October, and my wife just retired. So we, I wanted to move up to uh, North Alabama to be in the music scene and also recording um, for the next, you know, 10 to 20 years of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm in, a, I'm in a position now to where I can do this full time um, and be able to, uh, you know, meet new friends and uh, be able to record a new album, help other people with their albums. You started at what age when you started as a kid? Uh, Weren't you a kid? Uh, six years old when I started taking my first uh, music lessons, uh, playing the piano. And then um, was um, introduced to the guitar when I was about 10 and then uh, was in um, junior high and uh, just gravitated to music. So I joined the uh, elementary school or junior high school band program all through the public school systems, uh, played the saxophone um, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth grade. Not, and then the ninth grade in high school, I was in the jazz band all through uh, my senior year. Um, we won awards first, you know, first place awards. And uh, I was in all county and all state. And I'd be first chair and all those. So I knew I could, I knew I had the gift of music. I, I knew that at a very early age. My mom plays by ear and my granddad, um, he played guitar and sang. So I, that's kind of in my genetic uh, makeup. <laughs> right. Well, then, so you started out, what was it when you started playing? When you start playing, of course, when you're playing in the school band, you play whatever they tell you to play, you know, yeah. so you, where you, right. in the marching band and all, and, you know, and concert band and all this stuff. And my right. granddaughter was in it for a while playing. What did she play? That's a trumpet. I don't remember now. Yeah. But I'd go, I'd go and, and uh, watch her and I go, where did they get this music from? Because you know how yeah. schools are. They pull out stuff and you're like, I've never heard this song before. I don't want to hear Inagata De Vida again, but I mean, or something like that. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, so then you play that, but then did you continue, you got out of high school, and then did you say to yourself, what, what, what point in your age was you said, I want to do this for a living, or I can do this for a living? For a living when I was 14 years old. Wow. Uh, do that. Uh, I just didn't know how. And um, going on through uh, college and my professional days, you know, you have to earn a living. So I had a job and uh, I was in sales for about 10 years. And um, 
then I moved over into um, sales in a different company um, in, in automotive sales. I was a service advisor uh, at a car uh, dealership. And then um, all the while still playing, uh, still playing the piano, still playing the guitar um, and then um, the saxophone. And, and so in November of 1993, I just made a decision that I wanted to change my life. And I wanted to use music in a way that I could promote godly principles and values. So um, in 90, I think in 95, I released my first album and uh, it started taking off from there. I started getting a lot of gigs in uh, the local Birmingham area. And then I uh, was asked to go on tour and there I was selling 400 CDs a weekend. Wow. And of 18,000 people every night for Thursday, Fridays, and Saturday nights, and then fly back to Birmingham. I toured with um, with Joyce Meyer Ministries. It's a gospel. I, I know who they are. I played the church. I, I played a church lead guitar for a while. Yeah, I've heard of them. Oh, yeah. And I was in Dallas many, many times and uh, toured for years with her. Um, and in the contemporary Christian and the gospel realm, I, I won the Instrumental Artist of the Year at the Gospel Music Association, the GMAs. Oh, wow. Um, seminar in the Rockies. So I was very well known in the contemporary Christian and gospel. Not so much in secular, worldly, jazz, smooth jazz. Right. It wasn't until five years ago that I actually crossed over into the smooth jazz. You crossed over. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny the way I crossed over. Crossing over, yeah. So I, I'm sorry, how long ago did you say it was? You just said it. I, I heard you. About, how long? No, I five started, years ago jazz round not that i still don't do contemporary christian but you know you put on a hat i, I performed at the white house four times i was going to ask you how many different presidents no it was all uh, george w oh w yeah our In texas fact, boy the governor um of alabama had me to my band come down and to play for all their you know corporate executives and all his family and friends and we got to spend the night in the governor's mansion and we became good friends. It was Bob and Patsy Riley. And then when George W. had come to town as a fundraiser, they asked me to play. And I submitted all my, my, my music, you know, to be approved. And the White House called me and asked me if I could come play at the White House. And so they asked me for four years in a row, which was. And how long did it tell when you got a letter from the White House? How long is it between you say, open and say yes i mean it's like i imagine you go i'm on the phone yeah I mean, I mean that has to be i don't care who the president is i mean it really doesn't matter i mean right. th that you've had that that opportunity and being asked multiple times that says a lot about you and okay. it says a lot about your 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 uh your talent but this is the thing i talk to people about and you would probably agree with me on this is your talent is given to you. It you is. Know? And if you're lucky to get it, then you have to work at it. You, you have to be very hard because there are many people that are given that same talent. That's but true. you you really have to study and show yourself approved, as they say. You you can't um you can't just get up there and do and I'll just use this. You can't just go you just can't play the simple things you've got to really rip it like yeah so and, and that takes many 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 years not yep. hours not days not weeks not months it's years and years and years to where your fingers can lay on a piece of metal and leather pads and springs and corks and felts and um, mouthpiece with a, a reed that's going to vibrate at certain frequencies while your fingers are, are moving. I mean, you're taking an inanimate object and making it a part of who you are. And that's it's, true. it's decades of rehearsing. What's the old saying? 10,000 hours and then you become an expert at it or something like that. I remember they used to say that. I mean, how many people could say they've ever been invited to the White House one time? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you might be invited because you're a donor, but to perform four times, right. 
that's a that's a remarkable thing to me, and I think that says a lot about your character and your ability to what you do musically. And you've probably got to a point in your life, I'm guessing, that you're going to do the secular thing now, but you're remarkably good at it. And you probably go, well, if I do well, I do well. If I don't do well, eh, who cares? What do I, what do I have to prove? I mean, really. My my legacy are, are my albums. Um, you know, I, I have, I think, maybe 10 albums now. I'm working on this album right now. Please. Um, the album Pressing On was in the top one of the album, jazz albums for last year. Uh, the single Keep Pressing On was in the top 40. So, yeah, those are, are nice little accomplishments. You know, I'm on that. I'm I'm doing this for me and for my satisfaction, my my challenges and and um my plus it my days. You know, I haven't literally had a job in almost um thirty years, twenty five years. I've been doing nothing but music, so I get to the point where it's almost my legacy that I'm on this earth, and um I want to because music forever so I want so that's, that's kind of my the reason that I do what I do and I've met some of those guys who um, have had the big awards and the big accolades and uh, they know it in their heads and it kind of has turned me off so I um, I just try to just to be me you know uh, humble guy, just happy to be doing what I do for a, a living, uh, successful at it, and um, and enjoying and loving what I do every day. I, and I still practice two and three hours every day, whether I have a gig. I mean, I have, um, I'm doing the uh, Taste of Fourth Avenue Jazz Festival with my band uh, in Birmingham next Saturday, but I would still practice if I don't have another gig for uh, two more months. Your job is not a job to you. You've been playing music for so long. It's it's just it's I say this over and over again in every one of my interviews. If you're not having fun playing music, then you shouldn't be doing it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's um it's because it's in my heart. It's my passion. It has taken me further and longer and farther than somebody that would be just doing it for a job or for a paycheck or to get the uh, social recognition, you know, how many likes on my Facebook, <laughs> how many have people follow me. I, I, I've never aspired to any of that. Right. I aspired to being a great sax player and, uh, and a good person. Those, those are things that I strive every day to be. But uh, all that other stuff, um, I guess it'll come in time if, if the stars all align, but if they never align, that's fine too, because I've enjoyed my last 25 years, 30 years of doing nothing but music. So, you know, uh, I, so many people strive for that, but I think they tried to do it the wrong way. And they, they, get they of course. Yes. <laughs> and if I'm talking to a young person, I'll say it's the music business, not the business. Of, it's the business of music. It's not music Ooh. business. It is and, a business. And it's changed, as you know, dramatically over the years. Yeah. Um, and so many people tour um, to, to pay for whatever they got to pay for. And, and I, I had somebody, who was I talking to about this? And they, I, I said something, I think they're a fairly new artist. And I said, look, you know what? Here's the difference. I said, when you go and see somebody, an A-lister that you've seen your whole life, you, they have to do that every single night. It's a job. OK, it's it's not you. We look at it as an amateur or semi pro or whatever we look at it as. Oh, look, we get to put these people do it and they get on a freaking bus or plane every night and do it. It's work. And they, have, the other, they have to that that video shoot that was seventy five thousand dollars has to be paid for. <laughs> bus lease be paid for. That's right. Now, and my concert promoter, the only way they get paid is if I'm out working. So they're booking me night after night after night. Yep. We're on a tour bus. I don't even know what town I'm in. But I know that when I finish the show, I'm going to get some money and I got to pay it back out. So <laughs> do it if you allow that to happen. I've been there. Yeah. And I don't want any part of that. I'll no. do a fly. 
I'll do, you know, a one nighter show, but these, these long tours, I was on the road for four years in air, airports every week. And it just uh, kind of gets the best of you. <laughs> I had to travel some in my business life and I just, there was only one or I think one time I forgot where I was. I woke yeah. up in the middle of the night and go, what town <laughs> am I at? Yeah. And, and with you, I mean, the standard joke we always talk about, you know, bands going out and opening up the show and can't remember where they are. Well, when you got one show ever, and I, I mean, I look at one of my favorite guitar players is Jeff Beck. Oh, sure. Yeah. And and Jeff just finished a European tour and I, he's opened up his American leg here in yeah. Dallas. Yeah. And I looked at his tour thing and I'm like, every other day he's got for 60 days and yeah. I'm going, dude, you're 78. I yeah. know you love it. I mean, but come on. I mean, but I mean, that's part of it. But the money they get now, I mean, I had friends of mine, a uh, friend of mine said he's going to, what is he saying? The Eagles again or whatever they're doing or saying something. He says, I'm going to have to take money by IRA just to pay for my tickets. Right. I said, yeah. I was like, you know, and, but I think as an artist like yourself, once you've gone through that road, and I think when I grew up, I think that was one of the reasons I didn't try out that hard, because I thought that was the age when people, you know, you started locally, you try to get a bigger following, then you get bigger, and then you get into maybe in the city, the county, you play the county fair, blah, blah, blah. And then you got into Volkswagen van, and you got your van and put the equipment in it and try to go from night every night. You all slept in the same room eating peanut butter jelly. Right. That never appealed to me. No. I, I, you know, and I don't even know, even now, Van, if that still exists. I assume it probably does. I mean, it probably, people probably still do it. Yeah. But I don't admire those people. I mean, I admire the gumption to do it. Yeah. But, but to do it, and, and now I don't believe, in my mind, the business has changed so much. You could sit home and do stuff and make a gazillion dollars doing something on TikTok or something that, you know, <laughs> Yeah. Why, why go on on a tour busing tour? You know, it's great. You know this. It's fun to get the adulation. There's absolutely nothing. Uh, we all love that. There ain't nothing wrong with that. You you write all the stuff, and I most, and on, yeah. on my albums, I write most all my material. I'll do a cover tune every now and again, but I like to write. I like to come up with the uh, the ideas, the hooks, the melodies. Most all my songs have words, but since I'm not a singer. Um, I, I just play them on the, in, on the, uh, saxophones. So when you start writing, are you, do you start on the sax or do you sit down at the piano since you know how to play piano or does it matter? It, it comes from everywhere okay. uh, in the shower and have a melody, uh, get out and reach for my iPhone and record what I'm hearing in my head. I can be, um, just playing the piano and, um, a real me nice melody will come that I've never heard before. I hit the record button. Sometimes I'm just playing the sax and going through different uh, uh, melodies or intervals and, and then coming up with ideas that way. Sometimes I can hear one song and come up with another song. Mm. Um, I've written some songs in 15 minutes and I've written some songs that's taken 15 years. The <laughs> Put that in a hotel room in 1987 with just my guitar and a drum machine and a four track recorder. So you mentioned your band. Uh, mm -hmm. Is this something that you put together for a long time? You've been together for a short time. Tell me a little bit about it. Or just guys you know? Uh, you know, in the music business, you're feast or famine. Sometimes you're, you're making them good bucks and sometimes you're starving. So um, if I can do a show, um, you know, and, and make a good bit of money, then I'll bring uh, a band with me. I've got a lot of different keyboard players and drummers and bass players and guitar players that I will call from time to time, you know, based on the type of show. You know, I mentioned uh, one night I was at the doing the halftime show at the Monster Truck Rally, <laughs> a big um, ramp, a big mud ramp. And the next night I was at the White House. So, <laughs> <laughs> the band, do the monster truck rally show and do the halftime show and then take that same band to the white house. I mean, the, the, you just have to wear so many different hats as a saxophone player. Um, if I'm doing a wedding, it's just a me and a piano accompaniment. If I'm doing, um, um, 
a big high school reunion or a college, you know, frat party or something. No, I've got a high energy, uh, you know, kind of R&B funk band. Um, if I'm doing a WC Handy Music Festival, I'm doing more of a jazz type of a feel. So, right. But I do have um, a lot of great friends that are musicians that I do call on from time to time. And um, we go have fun. <laughs> well, you know, the great thing about where you live is that there's two things. One off, one thing is you've been doing it so long, you have all these contacts. Yeah. And it also says, when well, go back to the same thing I always said, you have talent and people want to <laughs> record with people with talent. You know, you're, you're a musician that's interesting because you can play so many genres. I mean, that's what's kind of cool about you. Yeah. You know, when I interview people, they go, what do you play? I said, I'm a rock blues guy. I, blew, I grew up in Texas. What do you think I'm going to, I mean, you know, I might, unless I play country, in which I'm not. But you, on the other hand, because of your quality and the, your, uh, your talent, you can play anything. I mean, you can literally, I'm, you, I'm sure you read, you have to be able to read because of what you do. And so if somebody comes up and says, can you do this? And you go, sure, I could do that. Yeah. This makes you a unique person in what you do which obviously gives you more opportunity to do what you do yeah and in session work you know I, you never know if you're going to be playing uh contemporary christian or gospel or if you're going to be um called to um to do some kind of a, a rock song uh, or if it's going to be a blues ballad or, a, you know, a, a Mustang Sally kind of a blues. Yeah. yeah. Blues or, and so you just, um, you kind of have to wear a lot of different hats, as I said. Um, the sax is going to have a unique sound for each individual. And what you do with it determines, basically, you know, there's no uh, C, D, E, and F note that's assigned to only a gospel song or only... <laughs> or rock those are the same notes yeah it's how i express them through that instrument for that particular song and i always try to stay within the you know the genre that that i'm asked to to play in, so do you do you go to europe i mean you talk about not i mean jazz is so big in europe do you ever desire to go over there and do any touring uh they play me in um in london uh, they play me in the uk a lot um, they're in the, in the way that the, the music industry works now is that you have to play, uh, especially for the saxophone, um, it's being widely accepted in, uh, the genre called smooth jazz. Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. And in smooth jazz, there is like a, a formula. The song can only be like three minutes and 35 seconds. You can't, don't bore us until the chorus. Just get it right there. <laughs> I don't bore us to the chorus. You want to hear the hook in your intro to tease us. So there's all these formulas that you have to do. And then once you get the song and it goes in there, you're competing with 47 other saxophone players. And they're all paying to be played on this certain jazz network. And um, then if you go up into the charts and you get the name recognition then the music festivals and the booking uh for talent say well his name is really strong and that'll bring in more ticket sales well he's doing good and he's a great sax player but he's not in the top 10 and the name recognition is not there yet so you, you almost have to have a machine behind you to put you up front mm paying a lot of money mm -hmm. to marketing, advertising, radio promotion. Um, there's, there's so much that goes in behind the scenes with radio and with um, especially uh, in certain genres. So I'm only speaking from experience. Yes, I've been invited to perform in Tokyo, Japan. Yes, I've been invited to perform in the United States, but Europe, they are playing me now, but I'm I'm not a, a big hit. I haven't had that breakout song there yet. Huh. So, yeah, you you just kind of explain the industry very clearly. I mean, because yeah. you know what people think, and it doesn't happen anymore, is you get picked up and they go, "Oh, look, it's really good. Let's put it on the radio and put it in rotation." That didn't, I don't think it works so anymore. Isn't that what they say about get get an Academy Award? Is people spend a lot of money get their PR out there? 
to, to, to oh, yeah. this, this is that's how they do it. And and like you said, they want to sell tickets. Oh, yeah. 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 And yeah. I know that jazz, because some of the people I followed over the course of years, they end up usually going to Europe because they don't make as much money in America. They go, they go to right. Europe, especially if they're jazz singers. They right. go over there. Yeah. And you, you just kind of encapsulated the whole industry real quick. Yeah. This is how it really works in this genre. And yeah. I, I can see it already and pushing out because that was the stories about Taylor Swift and her parents dropped a, a big number to get her promoted. Not that she's not talented, but, you know, like you said, there's 47 other people with probably as much or more talent that can do the same thing. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and there's nothing... I, I look at that because we all know you've come across and we all come across players. You go, why aren't they bigger than they are? Why aren't yeah. they more famous? Yeah. Yeah. It's just the stars didn't align. The way yeah. they're supposed to. I mean, it isn't, and we all know people that probably are really better than us and better than you, but they never get discovered and you're going, well, that's just the way it is. That's right. Yeah. So what do you see coming up? So you're going to, you, you, I noticed you've got a few things coming up, but you, you, what's your plan for next year? I know we're talking August, but people like you, they kind of, everybody kind of plans out for another year in advance. I'm happily, happy to say more of the same, uh, continually writing, continually re recording. Um, I've already been invited back to the Handy Fest next year. Um, I did three shows there. I was only in this town for one month and was asked to perform at three music <laughs> Uh, venues for Handy Fest. I've, I've never been to Handy Fest and never been up here, you know, for this before. So to get three the very first month, I was honored. Um, uh, my band will continue to rehearse, will continue to perform. Uh, I'll hopefully continue to get more gigs and book more shows, travel a little bit. Um, but, I, you know, unless I hired a um, a manager and a booking agent and a radio promoter. Those three things right there, anywhere from 1500 to 2000 every month mm -hmm. to pay them mm -hmm. to do the marketing, advertising, promotions, calling all the venues, booking me in all of these jazz clubs, all these music halls, you know, all of that is a big, um, a big machine that has to be going. And though I have done that, I didn't like the fact that I didn't have a choice. I had to be in a certain place at a certain time. And someone made that decision for me. Um, so I kind of like to pick and choose my own things now. Mm -hmm. And um, if it's a gig that I really, you know, want to go to, or they're going to pay a good bit, then sure. I, I'd love to, but I'm not in a position. I don't, I'm not to, at a point where I have to go play everything just to pay my bills. Right. Um, I mean, so next year. Yeah. I just want to uh, continue to make music, play music and, um, and release, you know, release more albums. Uh, I, you know, I didn't ask you this when you were growing up, who was your uh, idol that you met? You said, I love listening to them play anybody in particular that you listen to. I loved Billy Joel. He was a great songwriter, still is a wonderful entertainer. Um, I went but to any, any sax players or anybody that you said, I, went I mean, to a couple of Chuck Mangione, mm -hmm. uh, Hertz, he was real big back then. Um, yeah. Chris Vidala. Um, I started listening to, I think Grover Washington Jr. Mm -hmm. Pretty big back in the seventies, uh, uh, yeah. late early 80s um never heard of a kenny g never heard of a bony james never heard of a dave sanborn dave Koz. never heard of any of those until um the uh early 90s to the mid 90s then i started listening to them but i never really had any uh, uh, aspired to be another saxophone player mm -hmm. uh, i did like what kenny g was doing on the soprano so i bought one i met him at a concert and I brought my horn and he, and um, I started playing it and he stopped. It was backstage and he walked over to me and was clapping. And he said, first thing Kenny G asked me, he said, do you mind if I look at that horn? And I thought the horn, I said, it ain't the horn brother. <laughs> <laughs> 
old beat up old Yanagasawa. And he was looking all over it. And I said, that's just an old Japanese horn from the seventies. And he was said, it wasn't an alto sax. No, it was a tenor. Oh, so you're playing tenor. Okay. Okay. He handed it back to me. He said, my God, you've got a great sound. <laughs> and I said, well, I appreciate that coming from you. That's pretty good. So he really encouraged me and inspired me. And that's when in uh, 93, I, I made the decision to be in music full time. Yeah. So. Well, there's nothing hurts when somebody says that to you, that quality. Yeah, that's you know? right. And, and they're not just telling you that to make you feel good. Right. It, right. It's funny because everybody, even famous people have their idols. There's some great people, great artists out there, very humble. Those are the ones I like to uh, to be with, talk to, go backstage and hang out with. Um, the the ones that are uh, big shots and they know it, their head's a little bit too big for, for, my, for me. Well, and sometimes it's hard to talk to them because it's like, you know, you know, it's almost like you want to say, I know who you are. You don't have to keep telling me I know who you are, but you can't yeah. do that. <laughs> You can't right. do that. That's just not the appropriate thing to do. So, well, yeah. I want to wrap this up. I want to tell you, buddy, thank you so much for doing sure. this. I, I really appreciate it. I love your music. Uh, I now have a little insight on you, which is even better. And hopefully more people will listen to it when they watch this and, and listen to the podcast. I appreciate your time and have a good afternoon, brother. Awesome. You too. Take care. Okay. Hope to see you soon. All right. Thanks, man. See you. Uh -huh.